Yeah, it's nice and slippery. It's still living. That is green. <laughs> That's awesome. That tree is still alive. So cool. It's one step ahead of me. You're going for the wet log. That's daring. Probably not giving it any justice with the GoPro, but we're meticulously avoiding the water and it's going pretty well. This gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of a justice for what a difficulty it is. It's like playing a chess game with rocks and balance. Well, we are at the Canera Creek Canyon. Down there's Canera Creek that you hear. A little babbling brook. Super, down. super red rock all around us. Cool little waterfalls. And we're trying to find a big waterfall with a ladder in it that's been famously pictured for a little while now. So look up in there, it's awesome cliff walls. Our trail was supposed to be a little over a mile and we've gone that so far. Found 1.3, I think, at this point. We've so. missed our window precisely three hours from sunset, but the time might still be okay for light. As you can see, light's getting onto these rocks right here, so we're hoping we have a chance. We've got a little ways to go, and we keep passing people who are knee-deep in water, and we did not notice that part in the information on it. Now, two days ago, major storms came through here, flash floods. It's possible that there's more water in this area than there typically is and so that guy didn't include it because it was in november lower waters we're talking it's end of september and so the timing is probably not right for the season and well we got extra water just recently so we're going to keep going forward but we've already decided that if it's waist deep i'm going for it and brendan is not we'll find out stay tuned will brendan wimp out at waist deep water and honestly, uh, he's gonna have to hold all my electronics because I'm too short. Waist deep for me, waist deep for him is gonna be chest deep for me. All right. Hey guys, here we go. We gotta walk through water. We gotta give in, but it's gonna be the end. So it's worth it. Luckily, it doesn't look like it's that deep, so. <laughs> to a normal sized man, that doesn't look that deep, but I look like I'm gonna drown. I'm elbows deep in that water. Oh, socks are finally wet. Socks are finally wet. Oh, head. <laughs> oh, head is finally bleeding. I repeat. <laughs> Before we came in here, I asked Brendan, so do we need water socks? Does it say we need water socks? I don't see anything about water socks. No, no, no water socks. We're just gonna balance our way across wet, slippery, seal skin rocks.
Ah, oh, man, the light is not there. We're soaking for nothing. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Did we slip on a rock back there and hit our heads? Ah, oh, forget it. It's so much easier just to walk. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> okay guys, we've got our camera set up here. And uh, the waterfall you can see behind us is really, really loud. So I'm yelling at you guys, sorry. And uh, yeah, these pictures are turning out pretty nice. So we're gonna keep shooting and let you see when we're done. So I'm over here in the spot where it's been famously pictured and it's actually turning out pretty decent but I think I'm going to need to move over. I want to come over here to the left more and get out in this spot. I'm not sure if you see me at all. I'm going to go over here and get better shot. And I got to keep myself from dropping everything. My greatest fear in life right now is that my Canon 70D is not going to be good enough to capture these awesome moments. I get all the way out here to a great place, but I'm doing landscape and astrophotography and I got a prop sensor camera. So it makes it tough to decide, hey, do you need to buy a new one? Now, that greatest fear that I have of using this prop sensor camera, I don't think is causing any issues today. And frankly, after this trip, I'm putting it up for sale and I'm gonna get myself the 6D right now. They're equivalent in cost, but the 6D is gonna give me my landscape and astrophotography ISO that I need. Just wanted to get you guys up here. I'm gonna talk about it, but I'll probably just use it music. But check out this area. Brendan's capturing a shot of all the way up there. The waterfall's coming in, coming down this path. Now, this path is not for photography. This is literally the path that people take to go up to the next hike. This is just helping people get there. And yet it's just so photogenic. All right, I pretend like I follow Nick Page and listen to his advice in photography, and then I come here and I don't have my NRS boundary sock. If I had that, my feet would be awesome right now, but no. Instead, we're soaked ankle deep, not as bad as some people. Frankly, okay, look at that. There's I'm Brendan's speaking. ankles, and there's my like knee high. <laughs> <laughs> but this place is fantastic. At this point, oh, on the way here, we hadn't gotten wet. We only got a little bit on the soles and we were able to dodge everything. So it was fantastic. I would say that the shot there is turning into one of my favorites of the trip. How about you? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to process those. I'm super excited to process those. Yeah, absolutely worth the walk. The walk. Absolutely worth the walk. Uh, absolutely worth the hike. If you have a machete, you might need it because this trail is crazy. You go up and down. At the first, it feels like it's nothing. You're yeah, walking on yeah, a yeah. road. And then it breaks into, I'm going to cross the water. Well, I'll get a little wet. Okay. Then you constantly cross the water. Then you go across and up and under leaves, beyond branches, behind and up and down, under branches. Under roots, over roots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So if you're coming up here to Canary Creek Falls, come ready with water socks, shorts, and if you have anything you need to carry, like me, don't think you're just going to walk up here holding a tripod and a camera. Bring your backpack, bring your pack, put everything nice and snug on your back, and walk up here. It's a lot easier. But I way. brought mine. Yeah, you should uh -huh. be glad. So now we're going to head back. We're going to go capture the sunset, and then we're going to go to astrophotography. You said you're going to capture something over there? 
Might as well. just saw I think there's another one coming up here too that can look out the window from the tunnel and stand wow. all right so we're still in the tunnel I'm gonna pause it for a second okay, we're we're still in the tunnel it's a long tunnel how long did it say it was like a mile I don't remember seeing anything there's a sign back there said how long it was like I think it said like 1.1 miles or something so he built these windows and carved rocks out could you imagine what it took to make this tunnel <laughs> I mean the machinery they had to do yeah, back then they just kept blasting and blasting and blasting you know it that is incredible it's like a mine shaft <laughs> this is crazy crazy awesome Talk about the overlook we're going to. Oh my goodness. So we're going to the overlook that overlooks the road we just went on to to get to this tunnel. And uh, we're not sure exactly where it is yet. I think we're going to find it right after we get out of the tunnel and see if we can do a little bit of a walk up to the overlook and then uh, try to get some timed exposures of the, of the car trails going up and down the windy road. So we're pretty excited to check that out and see if we can get that shot to work. 
we just got back from the Zion Canyon Overlook. So we went through this crazy one mile tunnel that we showed you last time. We're going back through it. So this, we wanted this crazy hike trail. It's probably, it, went, it might have been a mile. I think it was just a mile. Just a mile bef between the parking really lot. So you go through the tunnel, you turn immediately right in the parking lot, get a space if there is one, and then you go across the street, go up the trail to the overlook, and it's inc the trail is incredible to begin with. Even though it's pitch black, it is still awesome. And so we had uh, walked all the way around the ridge, the rocks and all that stuff, and got our way up to the overlook, and it just sheer drops like hundreds of feet. It's amazing. And it's amazing. And so we got Milky Way shots that we'll show you. We've got some car trail shots that we'll show you. And uh, yeah, it was just pretty cool actually. It was really awesome. And Milky Way is brighter than I thought it was gonna be up there. And now we're heading over to Hoodoo the little City. Hoodoo City. And we're gonna do some more Milky Way shots, try to get some symmetry in our shots with the chimney rock structure and uh, see how it goes. Yeah, so the, so the car trails that I took pictures of, um, I stacked them up and I think they look pretty cool, but there's nothing else in this in this picture because it's just black. Like even from the back of the camera, I could tell that there's very little sky because I was focusing mostly on the car trails and this cool, awesome, windy road, switchbacking all the way up the mountain to get to that one mile tunnel. And that's all you see. You don't really see the rocks much. Like we didn't get there in time to do a any nice kind of nice establishing, establishing shot. shot of some really bright light shining on the rocks. So, yeah, cool picture, but uh, doesn't really, it's not really portfolio. Yeah, it was worthy. fun to do. So, but it was an awesome experience and fun to do. And I would definitely come back here and try it again and with some more, give, give us ourselves some more time and we will make it work better. I know it's hard to see, but I'm coming down here where Brendan's setup is for tonight's sleeping. And I wanted to check it out with the GoPro. So I'll do my best to make it visible here in a second using both mine and Brendan's light. <laughs> okay, you shine it on that side of the hammock and I'll shine it on this side. Sweet setup. So this strap isn't that bad. I kind of thought all that branch breaking I was hearing was bad sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, help you open that yeah. guy up. It's like trying to make a banana split. Huh? That is going to be amazing. See, you're off the ground. It's nice. Okay. I'll sit down here. Ooh. Ooh, I'm gonna have to tighten my Definitely getting some slack there. Can you shine your light on you? Oh, sorry. Like, hold on, lamp. Yeah, that's great. Okay, tell us again. So, uh, I can tighten it a little bit because it to totally pulled some slack. So, I can pull them tighter and I think I might be good. I think I'm a little too close to ground here. But it's nice I'm really, really close off the ground. How's it feel? It feels you... pretty nice, actually. <laughs> I'm digging this. I'm going to be disappointed compared to my setup because it's very much a slant up there and so my chair, I have to sit facing the moon in order to not fall off oh, of it. Oh dude, you've got to sit in this. This is gorgeous. Well, I'm not climbing in a hammock with you. No, I think I'm that's where I draw the line. Get out and you can get in. Oh good. I like that better. When we were yeah, here last right. time... Let me just tighten it a little bit. The hammock is definitely something on my list. Yeah dude, this was cheap. This was cheap, man. It's like 20 bucks. This is 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. See, my rope tightened up here. So, so I got a carabiner hooked up to this I guy. I think the only problem is the amount of effort to get it set up. Oh, it's not that rad. Uh, actually, strapping it, yeah, totally fine. Uh -huh. It's the finding the trees. Uh huh. Especially trees that you know you're not going to do any damage to, like these ones. Like you're not bending them down. Uh -uh. These are nice big trees. These straps are straps are nice and tree friendly. They're just gonna rub a little bit, and then they'll be they'll be good. I hope the bears aren't Mexican and want to have a pinata. Uh huh. How much candy falls out of you? Pretty fun, a lot. Too much. Can just tuck that in, and then you can have just have a seat on there. Okay. 
Okay, that was pretty dang fantastic. I was really comfortable. I climbed in it and since it's so hard to see anything, I figured I wouldn't bother filming it. But hey, we have a good setup. We're happy tonight. So we've got some pretty awesome setup for sleeping tonight. This is the last night of our trip. Just like last night, we're having a time-lapse go. He's doing a time-lapse of the Milky Way, and I'm gonna do a time-lapse of the stars where I composite all the time-lapse frames together to make a star trail. I have that point of the hoodoo pointing right at Polaris, and so I'm gonna have about six hours, oh well, no, probably five hours of shots, so it's not enough to really do an awesome view, but I'll show you my setup and let's go to bed. You need anything else? Have a good night. If I start hearing my mariachi music, I know the bears showed up to eat you. Okay, so here I am at my setup. You can see my camera's right there, pointing at this big rock feature. In fact. All right, so you see that rock feature up there? This is my feature for the shot. My camera down here is capturing that on a time lapse. You can see it's running right now. You can see it's running right now. You know, I'm ruining a couple frames, but the time lapse is going to be something I can just pull the stars out and mask out all the stuff that I've ruined, so I'll be fine. So here's my chair. That's what I'm gonna sleep on tonight. It's not the best setup, but the chair folds all the way back and it makes a good bed. Not a fully laid back recline position but keeps me off the ground a little bit warmer and i bind like this situation and so i'm just sleeping here next to my camera and going for it see any of this when we came in the dark and so this view is absolutely gorgeous and uh, we now know why it's part of Zion's Na Zion National Park because it's amazing and uh, it makes me want to just do a crazy three-day climb up that thing but I don't have the strength <laughs> to do it <laughs> no. or the expertise but it totally makes me want to explore on those crazy huge rock faces it's just amazing so one of these days we'll have jetpacks and we can fly around yeah. and cool places like that. So I think we had a pretty good successful Zion trip. We got a lot of the things on our list that we wanted to get. Um, there's still more we want to do, so we are excited to come back. But uh, we got you know some great overlooked views. We got some great Milky Way shots. We got some great other little places at Hoodoo City that most people don't even know about or go to. So even the locals don't even know about it. Yeah. So we have found a new favorite little spot there. And uh, so yeah, we had a really great time. We're glad you could join us and we hope to see you again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks guys.